This is the Evening Buzz, presented by Mikhail Atia. It's been nearly a year since Microsoft finalized its acquisition of Activision Blizzard for a colossal deal worth $69 billion that shook the entire industry. Now, despite this, there has only been, so far, one Activision title, Diablo 4, that has made it to the Xbox Game Pass subscription service so far, which, if you, don't, if you guys don't know, Xbox Game Pass has become Microsoft's core business model for their platform, a monthly subscription service that you can pay for anywhere from not a 10 to $15 a month, and you get access to... Uh, over a hundred games, a variety of games, um, so long as you're subscribed to it. And it's in a day where all of us are very subscription oriented, you know, Netflix and uh, Amazon Prime, it was eventually going to happen to video games. And Xbox Game Pass has kind of been the disruptive business model in the gaming industry as it's even forced PlayStation to come out with their own business model, a subscription service that is the PS Plus and now with its own tiers as well. But uh, ever since they bought out Activision Blizzard, which is a massive publishing company that has a huge library of games, nothing has come out yet. Now, according to a report by Windows Central on July 3rd, um, the first update we've gotten is that Crash Bandicoot, the trilogy, the remake trilogy, is set to arrive on Game Pass starting August. So this trilogy, if you guys don't know, is a remake of the original three Crash Bandicoot games. And um, that's pretty much the only thing we know so far that's confirmed from them. There are rumors that there are other big Activision titles such as Tony Hawk Pro Skater, uh, Spyro, the trilogy, the remake trilogy, will be making its way to Game Pass. But why is this Microsoft strategy? Why is it that they're just trickling Activision exclusive titles to the to the subscription service instead of just dumping it all at once? Because from what I remember out of just personal memory is when they acquired Bethesda, uh, Bethesda uh, Softworks, they basically put all of their titles, the Fallout, the Elder Scrolls, Wolfenstein, Doom, they put it all into Game Pass all at once but i think maybe they learned a lesson from this that putting all that much into a platform could not give the intended traction or the intended new subscribers that they were hoping for so i think doing a trickling sort of release is a little bit more viable because that way every game can have every new game that comes into game pass can get a spotlight you have to also understand that game pass is bringing in almost i think every month or two or bi-monthly they bring in other third-party titles as well which also can steal the spotlight so you have to imagine they have to try to balance the exclusive titles and the third-party titles all mushing and mashing together uh, on a monthly basis which i think is is smart and it's uh it gives room for new releases to be played by gamers because if you just pump in another like imagine all of a sudden you just put all of activision's titles into game pass which is anywhere from 50 to 100 new titles you're going to overwhelm that platform people are not going to play everything uh, so i think giving doing a kind of like a marketing tactic where you release one uh, every couple of months give it a spotlight new brings in new subscribers I think that's the, 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 the clear, much better approach. But we all know later this year, because they announced it during the uh, Xbox showcase, that Call of Duty Black Ops 6 will be making its way to Game Pass day one. This is going to be one of the biggest shifts I've ever seen for this franchise, especially because Call of Duty has always been cross-platform, but with now under Microsoft's belt, it seems that they're going to be playing their they're going to be playing their cards very meticulously on this because you have to understand PlayStation went to court because of this issue. They really believed that Microsoft was pulling a monopoly move here and after a lot of debacle and a 10-year deal to ensure that Call of Duty will still remain cross-platform. This is the first move we've seen Microsoft say, "Hey, um 
it's going to be cross-platform, but it's also going to be on Game Pass day one. So would you rather pay $70 for a full-fledged game um, or you pay 10 bucks a month and you still get to play Call of Duty? It's it's a definitely an experiment. It's a, it's a testing phase for this franchise because no other Call of Duty title has yet to make it a Game Pass. Um, so I think I think I think again, like I said, it's there's a trickling kind of strategy from Xbox here to ensure not every title makes it to the Game Pass subscription just yet. Give every release its moment, its spotlight, and let it be effective. Let it be impactful. But you guys tell me what you think. Now with Microsoft owning Activision Blizzard, what are some titles that you're you're hoping to see make their way to the Xbox Game Pass? Are you someone who subscribed to that service? I subscribe to it from time to time, depending on what releases there. Uh, I subscribe for like a month or two, play the games, and I and I jump out. Still, it's a lot more cost effective, budget oriented for a lot of gamers out there. Uh, very smart subscription service that's probably going to be here for quite some time and could be at the core of Microsoft's future in the gaming industry. Let's take a short break and we'll be right back with more news coverage from the world of entertainment right here on The Evening Buzz. Stay tuned. If you liked this episode of The Evening Buzz, drop a like and subscribe. Be sure to follow us on Instagram for all our daily updates and top stories.